Hi everyone, welcome to the second part of this tutorial where we build a Rubik's Cube using Python and then train it to solve itself using machine learning. In the previous video we created a single piece of a Rubik's Cube, but it didn't have any different color faces. So in this episode we will build on that to create a complete Rubik's Cube with realistic pieces. My channel's name is a little bit hard to remember, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss future videos. To create a realistic Rubik's Cube simulation, it's essential to understand its structure. A standard Rubik's Cube is a 3x3x3 cube made of 27 smaller cubes with 6 faces, each having a unique color. In the previous episode, we created a class named cube that generated a single cube with a solid color, so in this episode, we'll use that class to construct the pieces of a Rubik's Cube and assemble them into a complete cube. Each piece will consist of seven parts. A black center, which is the core, and six colored faces. We'll use the same cube class to create the faces by adjusting either the height, the width, or the length of the cube to make it thin enough to cover one face of the black core. We'll repeat this process in a loop to create 27 pieces, resulting in a full Rubik's Cube. So, let's translate this into code. In our generate Rubik method, we first define six possible colors for the faces. We also set an offset value which determines the spacing between the pieces, and define sizes for the different faces that we will attach to the core of each piece. The sizes are slightly adjusted to ensure they fit properly around the core. We then use three nested loops. Each one should do three iterations for each axis, in order to iterate through all possible positions for the 27 pieces of the Rubik's Cube. For each combination of the x, y and z coordinates, we create an array, face colors, to determine the color of each face. The color is set to black if the face is not on the outer layer of the Rubik's Cube. Otherwise, it is assigned one of the predefined colors. Next, we calculate the position of the center of the current piece based on the offset and the loop indices. This is done by subtracting one from each coordinate x, y, z to center the pieces around the origin and then multiplying by the offset. We then create a cube object for the center of the piece using the calculated position and set its color to black. For each face of the pieces, front, back, right, left, top and bottom, we calculate its position relative to the core's position. Each face is created as a thin cube using the cube class with the appropriate size and position, and assign its respective color from the face colors array. The face positions are then calculated by adding or subtracting half the size of the piece from the center position in the appropriate direction. Finally, we append the center and all six faces of the current piece to the cubes list. By the end of the loops, we would have generated 27 pieces, but for this instance, we will just generate one. Now, let's visualize our progress. Return to dev.py file, which contains the animation loop, we no longer need to create individual pieces manually since the generate queue function will handle that for us, in the animation loop, remove the two specific lines mentioned earlier. After drawing the grid, we will add a loop to draw our Rubik's Cube. This loop will iterate over the uh, pieces of our Rubik's Cube 
For each piece, it will iterate over its parts. The first part is the black core, of course, which we will use as the position reference. Finally, we call the PyRay draw model method, passing the part model, its position, its scale factor, and its color as arguments. When we run the code, we get a single piece exactly as intended. We can see the black core with six faces, two of which are black because we decided to leave them black if they are not on the uh, outer layer of the Rubik's Cube. If you dismantle a Rubik's Cube in real life, this corner piece should look exactly like this, or something similar at least. Next, let's go back to the Rubik class and set the nested loops to iterate three times over each axis, resulting in 27 iteration in total generating 27 pieces. When we run the code again, we get a complete Rubik's Cube with six colored faces, just like a real one. That's all for today. In the next episode, we'll see how to rotate the Rubik's Cube faces exactly like in real life. Until then, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future videos. Peace.